This show contains spoilers, adult language, and sexual assault. Woof. <laughs> Listener discretion is advised. Movies with Ron. Movies with Ron. Hell yeah, motherfucker. Movies with Ron. All right, holy shit. This Joker movie coming out well, won the Golden Lion at the Venice Film Festival. Yeah. Really? Fucking... It beat Roman Polanski, because he, he took the runner-up prize. A fucking movie about the Joker. <laughs> I guess I have to see it now. Yeah. Yeah, but Roman Polanski sucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he didn't mind coming in a little behind. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 131 of Movies with Ron, the podcast where my older brother recaps a movie from beginning to end. For me and you, because we like his versions better. It's okay if you've seen the movie or not, the experience is unique. So let's get it on. I'm Chris, your MC for the time being, here with me tonight on Friday the 13th with a full moon. Ooh. It's Nurse Candy. Hey, everybody. And here he is, folks. He's the ball cracker, death on foot. You know him, you love him. He's Ron. 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 Yes! 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 Hey, Ron. Hey, Ron. Hey, guys. Welcome to episode 131. After a long time off. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had some hurricane trouble. We did. Which turned out to be nothing. But, you know, we were. I was hunkered down. <laughs> they say w when you look at podcast analytics and research, having a show, one of the biggest things of advice is keep it constant. <laughs> Don't mess up your recording schedule. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, be reliable to the listener. And, you know, I listen to reliable shows and they run out of ideas. And, like, they're not fun and I unsubscribe. W when you get... A show like Movies with Ron, and sometimes a month goes by, but you'll still always get one eventually. Yeah. That's the kind of show you'll listen to the rest of your life. That's right. <laughs> and usually after these big breaks, we usually come back strong. I know, fresh. Yeah. yeah. I'm fucking hard as a rock. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone say hi to Jay Crawford and Kim Kim Stokes. They hey, like, guys. They like the Facebook page. Oh, Jay wow. and Kim Kim, welcome to the show. Mm -hmm. And Jay already made a recommendation. Oh, Ooh. really? <laughs> well, I, I don't know, because he didn't go out and say, hey, you guys should do this. He just posted the poster on the Facebook page, uh -huh. and his cannonball run. Candy? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, no more. No more Burt Reynolds. <laughs> I, think it's, uh, I think it's time. It is an epic race movie. Racing movie. A movie <laughs> about race. <laughs> On an epic scale. I do love those kinds of stories. What, racism stories? <laughs> but the big ones. Epic racism. <laughs> yeah. We also got a new review. All right. Woo. So my pity party paid off. Good. I knew if we waited long enough, one would show up. <laughs> From the user MD Harper. And folks, these are the uh, iTunes reviews. I know a lot of you use Android and stuff, but any Apple or iTunes users, it's titled Excellent As Always. All right. Wonderful recap of classic, current, and sometimes little-known movies with a raw description and breakdown of plot, characters, and actors. I always find myself waiting in anticipation for the next episode and wondering what they will cover next. All right. How great is that? Thanks, Harper. From M.D. Harper. All right. I don't know if you guys go on the internet, but um, <laughs> they did this, this thing where they fed a bunch of screenplays into a supercomputer, like an artificial intelligence, something primitive, but smart enough to where you could give it a bunch of screenplays and it would write its own screenplay. Yeah. Okay. And like, you can tell the parts where it's actually learning from other writers and uh, the way it describes stuff, but then it'll say something stupid like Jack eats phone, <laughs> <laughs> but then it'll just go on with the story, right? Because it's a dumb machine. I want to make a supercomputer listen to our show, <laughs> 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 and 
and then make a bunch of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> We can use those to fill in the breaks. Yeah. <laughs> Jack eats Benoit Falls. <laughs> Giant rubber dildo. <laughs> eats phone. <laughs> All right. She's a favorite of movies with Ron. Been up to date on her current events. The stunt woman who got her face degloved. Oh, oh no. yeah. Yeah is finally suing the Resident Evil producers. Oh, wow. <laughs> finally built a case. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Apparently, they all rehearsed the the shot multiple times, yeah. rehearsed it, and then the director changed things. Uh-huh. Nobody told her. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like John Landis. Yeah. Oh. Fuck him. Uh, change the subject. <laughs> Plot right. John Landis. Plot <laughs> him. Speaking of... Controversial shit in movies. Okay, the program from 1993. Who remembers that? James Caan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It had Zangief from yeah. Street Fighter in like one of his most compelling roles ever. Yeah, it's a kind of college football story. Mm-hmm. Anyways, they had this scene where, in order to prove their toughness, the football players would lay on the freeway. Yeah. And cars would either stop or they'd run over. But they all stop in the scene because the players are tough, you know? Okay. It was like a a bonding moment, a macho moment in the movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, People did it after seeing that. Oh, God. And died. Oh. And you can't get the program with that scene in it anymore. Oh. (laughs) I got it. (laughs) You know, uh, James Caan, one of his greatest movies ever that I think, uh, Alien Nation. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah. 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 Right? You know who hates it? Can't stand it? James Caan. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Interviewers bring it up and he's like, why did you have to bring that up? <laughs> like he, he, can, he cannot stand it. Isn't that weird? Yeah, that's weird. He what wasn't even asshole. the alien. Yeah, what's his problem? I know, right? Do you know who the alien was? Yes, I do. Mandy Patinkin. I love Mandy Patinkin. I know. James Caan should do a film with John Landis. Kind of <laughs> sounds like. Yeah. All right, Full Moon Features is rolling out its own streaming app. This is not a commercial. If you have a doll fetish, like Charles Band, (laughs) you can now subscribe to Full Moon online and watch all of those doll movies. You like dolls? Charles? (laughs) Screw your dolls. His doll fetish has served him so well. <laughs> it really did. Like, he's doing okay. <laughs> Seriously, though, we watched so so many of those movies growing up. Uh-huh. It's weird. It being 2019 and hearing about all this, like it's still yeah. around. I know. If you want longevity, you need a strong fetish. <laughs> I went to see Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Oh. Yeah. Really? Wait, wait till it's on a streaming site that you already pay for. Yeah. Not a strong fetish. Nope. (laughs) No. I had a feeling. Uh, But I took a chance. Uh, I watched About Time from 2013. You guys ever seen it? Uh Uh-uh. No. Kind of time travel movie, but made by the guy who did Love Actually. Right. Those charming British romantic comedies. You want to hear the special thing at the end? Rick Grimes is gay. (laughs) (laughs) He can go back in time whenever he wants. Okay. And it's something that the men in his family do, like his dad has to tell him about it. It's kind of like Teen Wolf. Okay. But uh, he ends up having a kid, and then he goes back and changes something before the kid was born, and he comes back to present day, and it's a different kid. Oh. Like, it's still his kid, but it's like a... he has a to go loser? To, he has to go to his dad, and his dad is like, yeah, once you have a kid, you can't go before that, because when you return, your kid will be different. Oh. It's just like little changes. He learns the rules of being a man who can time travel. Yeah. You know? But the special shit at the end, I'm going to ruin it for everyone. Because it's like, everyone should know this. <laughs> he gets the final advice from his dad, and it's to live every day twice and always do it. Even if it's a good day or a bad day. Because on the second day, you'll know everything. You'll be happy. You'll be able to, you know, any chaos that's coming. All uh-huh. right. And uh, you'll be a breeze and do that every day. Uh-huh. And the guy explains in the voiceover, like, 
after you do that enough times, I stopped going back in time. I stopped reliving the day because I lived every day like it was the second time I experienced it. Oh, wow. That's good. And that's the message of the movie. Like, that's how you should live your life. I fucking love it. About time from 2013. Yeah, that's Good great. movie, man. You're get welcome. That, get that look off your face. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great story. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I saw Ready or Not. Did anyone get excited about that? I got excited when I saw the preview. But what is that? I haven't seen it. Uh, this woman joins this family, marries the son. Okay, gotcha. They play hide and seek, they and hunt, they're going to they kill her. They hunt her down, yeah. Right. Good first 45 minutes. Then they stop playing hide and seek. <laughs> they stop. And the movie's, uh, you know, it goes on. It's scary. It's cool. But uh, I wanted the game through the whole <laughs> damn movie. Yeah. They don't stick with it. Same thing with Up in Smoke from 1978. <laughs> the Cheech and Chong classic. Uh-huh. First 45 minutes. Goddamn priceless. They get arrested. Uh-huh. Taken to jail. They're in jumpsuits. Tommy Chong had to take all the drugs when they got arrested. Yeah. So they wouldn't get caught with them, right? So he's reeling, like at an unbelievable level. He's stumbling, and Cheech has to, like, support him and, like, pretend he's a normal guy and they <laughs> they go into the courtroom tommy chong grabs the cup off of the judge's desk and drinks it and fucking spits it out and he's like fucking vodka man <laughs> <laughs> and the next shot is them walking as free men because <laughs> they caught the judge drinking <laughs> Forty-five minutes after that, oh, I don't know, man. I haven't had any luck with movies. Mm. I had luck with Kong Skull Island. We did a good episode on that. Yeah, finally watched it. Fucking good oh, really? Movie, though. Yeah, yeah, that movie's great. First forty-five minutes, anyway. <laughs> All right, humanoids from the deep. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! That's, that's the sound they make when they come up from the deep. How do you know? I remember being so little and watching this movie that I had no idea. I thought it was a monster movie, and I really had no idea what was going on until the very end of the movie. Yeah. Oh, like I had no idea the entire movie was about that. The poster of this movie, there's a female body yeah, looking kind of violated. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty... F- <laughs> she goes, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> Candy loves this kind of stuff. <laughs> I really do. Pretty bold poster, if you ask me. Oh, my God. Directed by Barbara Peters. And then improved <laughs> by Roger Corman. <laughs> but then I heard that they took out what Roger Corman added. I don't know. Yeah, see, I'm not sure. Because they say Barbara Peters was one of the few women to direct sleazy stuff at the time. She wasn't happy with Roger Corman's recommendation to add more titty-grabbing sleaziness. <laughs> he had to do it behind her back. Yeah. Oh. So it's a good movie to recap. Oh, yeah. I've been waiting for this one. Starring Doug McClure. Doug McClure! Yeah. Looking him up, I found a movie called The House Where Evil Dwells from mm-hmm. 1982. A haunted house movie where the ghost is a samurai. Yeah. Pretty cool shit. I gotta see that movie. Next, we got Ann Turkle. Yes, that lady from Humanoids from the Deep. <laughs> Plays a doctor. She was pissed off at the additional titty grabbing inserted after, you know. Oh, yeah. She tried to get the film blocked because of it. Oh. Tried to do it legally. Uh, it didn't work. <laughs> and finally, we got Vic Morrow. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And now you find out why we're doing Humanoids from the Deep. And me and Candy grew up on this movie, but the last time I paid far too much attention to John Landis, you know? Mm-hmm. And I felt really bad, so I wanted to give Vic Morrow yeah. his time to shine. All right. This is it. Yeah, if you're just joining us, last episode was Innocent Blood, directed by John Landis. Which I loved. We talked a bit about Vic Morrow. He uh, got killed with a helicopter blade. Yep. Helicopter fell on him. Cut his head off. And he is one of two 
Hollywood men to die on the job from a helicopter blade Oof. accident. Oh. The other one was Boris Sagal, the director of Omega Man. Kind of movie wow. we liked when we were kids. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was uh, reading a script, intensely reading the script while walking, <gasps> oh. and walked into the rear blade Whoa. of a helicopter. Oh. And, um... Fuck John Landis. <laughs> That's all I got. I love ending on a low. Thanks for taking us there, Chris. Yeah. Humanoids from the Deep on Movies with Ron. Let's do it. <laughs> it's showtime. is the music that's playing Mm. we're underwater like wandering through kelp forests and gross seaweed things (laughs) and then all of a sudden we just get this shot of above the water and it says monster and it turns out that's the real name of this movie (laughs) yeah yeah that's what they called it first and it even says in teeny tiny little letters underneath it, a uh, humanoid from the deep. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to think of it as Revenge of the Snorks. Come along with the Snorks. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the Snorks candy? I, I do. I do. <laughs> That's good stuff. They're weird, this is what happens when they grow up. Weird sexual proboscis. Probiscus? <laughs> they have little dicks coming out of their yeah. heads. Mm-hmm. Probes. But mm-hmm. then the dicks have holes. Every dick has a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Some have more than others. Have you seen that new dark crystal thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know what scene I'm talking about? They show one of the Skeksis peeing, and they show the stream, and it turns into three. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> That's Netflix like, man, we gotta get edgy. <laughs> I'm not quite sure where this movie takes place. I figured since it's a fishing village, it'd be somewhere in Maine, right? But then there's like a big Native American thing, and I, I don't think they were in Maine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Oregon? Washington? Anyway, it's always cloudy. How about that? Okay. okay. And that spooky music is still playing as we're going over, you know, the dock with all the fishing boats. I mean, just fishing boats, baby. All over the place. Oh, Mm-hmm. And they are spooky. Okay. <laughs> the music works. And there's like, guys sewing nets. <laughs> Working hard at it. Shut up. <laughs> Spraying all of the garbage life off of the decks of the boats. You know, like starfish. Nobody eats that shit. <laughs> Spray it away. <laughs> and then there's like, oh, this, this, you know, SUV pulls up and this guy gets out. And he's, he's got his brother with him. And this is, it's Doug McClure. Okay. And he's, they're walking down to the dock. And we join them, like, mid-conversation. And Doug McClure is like, As, you know, it's almost not worth going out anymore, you know? The salmon, they, they've all but disappeared. I'd, I'd be happy with a, a good tuna fish. <laughs> salmon. <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> and he says that. It's like, what? <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> Like it was, it's an obvious dubbing error that they somehow left in. Yeah. Huh. It's great. It made me think about Chris. <laughs> he, he edits in like accidental repeats. So, <laughs> some stuff we say sometimes. <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> so this is Doug and his brother Tommy, and they're passing another boat. This whole village, everybody's friends, okay? But they all got their own fishing boats, so they're actually competitors, you know? So it's like healthy competition. Turns out the salmon, you know, it's a salmon town. It's kind of dried up. They pass by another boat with Deke and his crew. And one of his crewmen is his little lazy son, Jackie. Little little chubby guy. Reading a comic book. Not paying attention to his dad. They're like, hey, Deke, how's that beard coming? (laughs) 
He's like, oh, you know what, Tommy? It's starting to itch real good. We're going to have a real good run here pretty soon. Them fish are coming. And then Doug McClure is like, <laughs> yeah, you don't shave that shaggy mess until we all fill our holes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you got it. <laughs> uh, that's what he said. Mm. Like with money? <laughs> you ever fill your hole with money? <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> no, Fill it with he, rocks. Yeah, he prefers gravel <laughs> and razor blades. Oh, fuck, I forgot about that. <laughs> Knife handles. <laughs> anyway, Doug that, turns that around. That should be our logo. <laughs> <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> Doug turns around, and it's Vic Morrow, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right, uh, don't touch him. Don't touch him! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a big mustache and a big old mop of curly hair. Ah, oh, hey, Doug. He's kind of a, you can tell he's like maybe a little rich guy. You know, he's he's got a bigger boat than everyone. Okay. Uh, Perfect day, right? Oh, Damn near perfect. And he says this because he sees this guy pulling up in a little motorboat. Mm -hmm. This is Johnny Eagle. Okay. And he is a Native American member mm. of the town. And Vic Morrow in this movie is a racist. Oh, oh, damn. Just like he was in his last role. Oh, no. <laughs> in the Twilight Zone. It's, it's like being in the Twilight Zone. It's weird. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, he doesn't like Johnny Eagle. <laughs> Doug's like, hey, Johnny, you going out today? Ain't enough fish out there to pay for my gas. You get that cannery. Ain't going to be any fish at all in two or three years. Vic's like, hey, canneries mean progress for towns like ours. That means money. You and your people, you don't get it. You're not going to stand in our way. Hey, that's what Custer said, Morrow. And Vic Morrow's like, I know. <laughs> All right, boys, let's kick ass. Go fish. So they all pull out to go fishing, and we are treated to a shot of a one-legged seagull eating some garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just this town. Like, that's, that's what that's supposed to be. Oh. Anyway, we are out at sea with Deke, okay? The guy with the beard. <laughs> right. And the lazy, no-good son. <laughs> and he's like, Jackie, turn it on. Turn on the winch. And Jackie, he's lazy and... He's just reading a comic book called How to Avoid Being a Man. <laughs> right? Not even listening to his dad. And he's all, huh? Oh. Like, it sticks in my craw. <laughs> <laughs> we got something in the net. We got to catch. Turn on the witch, Jackie. Damn it. <laughs> and underwater, we see a big leathery green monster hand stuck in the net. Like, already. Just a hand, you know. But, uh... <laughs> Humanoids from the deep, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, all right. In like the first four minutes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's caught, but uh, it's big. Uh, so, <laughs> so the winch motor, it, it like stops. God damn it now, what? <laughs> and Jackie just looks at the winch motor and goes, out of gas, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're telling me you've been out here all day and you didn't think to check the gas in the goddamn winch motor? Huh? <laughs> oh, sorry, Pop. Ah, oh, come on now. Sorry doesn't get it, son, so fill it up. <laughs> and this monster uh, is just down there in the net screeching, okay? He's, he's caught. He's stuck in a net. Smitty, start the engine. Get her moving. And then it doesn't start, and the Smitty is like, oh, the oil pump's gone out. Ah, shit. Why me? And we see Jackie uh, fumbling with the gas can, trying to fill up the winch motor. Monster's pulling on the net, and he's going to break the boom right off of the boat, right? Oh. So, mm -hmm. ah, the boom's going to break! <laughs> Forget it, Jackie! Help us pull this in! Jackie just drops the gas can, and it leaks fuel all over the deck. And oh, this, like, yes. no one even knows it, okay? So they're pulling on this net, and they are fighting. The boom finally breaks, and in goes Jackie. Into the water like Augustus Gloop. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel now, Jackie? Hungry! <laughs> <laughs> J 
Jackie's got time. He's like, glub, glub. Okay. He's got time to give his dad one last dumbfounded look just to prove he still doesn't get it. And he goes under. <laughs> and then we see a big hole in the net. Okay. So the monster has obviously escaped. And then blood. Okay. Fuck yeah. In the water. Yeah. And Deke like goes ape shit. I gotta get my son! I gotta get my son! I gotta save him! And he's trying to jump in, and his first mate is like, No, nah, man, don't do it. Like, he's grabbing <laughs> it. He's holding him back from jumping in to save his kid. Is this still at night? Nothing has been at night ever so far. <laughs> 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 Shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Does this ever Freddy? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> what time of day did you think it was? <laughs> Daytime. <laughs> Your mind just went off on a tangent. Is this joy, right? <laughs> huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> this guy holds it back. He's like, there's nothing you can do, man. Don't save your son. It's weird. He doesn't yeah. let him, doesn't even let him try. Anyway. Well, whatever's down there is going to eat him. It is not clear from above the water that anything is down there eating anyone. You know? Right. Smitty, inside the, uh, you know, uh, the superstructure of the boat uh, where he's driving, he loads up a flare because he is a man of action. Okay? He runs out onto the deck, slips in the gas. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> And then big ass titties, boom! It blows up. The whole boat blows. Oh shit! He, he fired off the flare as he was as he fell in the gas. It was like watching the Keystone Cops. It's beautiful. That's what happens when you read comic books. You kill your dad and everybody you know. Get a job. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Anyway, Doug and Tommy see it from their boat, and they're like, call the Coast Guard. Oh, I don't see anyone in the water. So Doug just like, watches it burn. And we cut to night. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it's just him playing with his toddler son, like, no big deal that someone died today. It's cool. Sheriff is there in his living room, and they're talking, you know. Yeah, Deke's boat leaked oil, Sheriff. You know, like a sieve. Sheriff. Uh, leprechaun Sheriff? No, Rick. Leprechaun sucked his dick. How about that guy? Okay. okay. William Newman, the sheriff from Leprechaun. Uh, William Newman. Leaked oil like a sieve, huh? <laughs> Which would make it damn easy to rig an explosion, huh? It's pretty good. Big companies don't want to settle where these things happen. Uh, and some here don't want the cannery. <laughs> <laughs> and Doug's wife, who is Carol, played by... Some lady from Humanoids from the Deep. <laughs> She's like, what do you think, Sheriff? Do you think Johnny's involved in this because he doesn't want the cannery? Johnny Eagle? Mm -hmm. Sheriff, they were shooting at something, and it wasn't Johnny Eagle, and they weren't shooting at anything. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's an editing plot hole that they created hmm. and then left that in. Chris ain't even fucking listening. <laughs> Fuck it. But... They shot off the flare gun. That doesn't mean anything like that. Flare gun? Oh, my God. Like they saw the monster. And were and they shooting cut at out, it. They cut the out the re first reveal of the monster. Yes. That's what happened. That's why What's-His-Name wanted to jump in and the first hand would not let him. All right. Because they had seen the monster. Maybe. So I'm right. You ready to move on? Yeah. All right. Dog growling, kid crying. <laughs> oh. The dog. It's like a golden retriever type situation. Okay. Nice, friendly family dog. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He's barking. He's like, oh, go ahead. Sick him. And he lets him outside. He just opens the front door and then shuts it. You know, lets the dog out. But outside, you see like horror movie fog. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog goes out and goes right to the garbage like a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts eating. Okay. Then he finds a slime trail. Slime, right? Uh-oh. Like cream of wheat? <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and he follows it out into the trees in the woods. Okay, and he's barking, barking, barking. Come on! He's ready. He wants to fight. 
<laughs> whatever is leaving this slime around, and then all of a sudden he finds it. <laughs> this this giant monster just picks him up. Ooh. Oh, and it's dark, so you can't really see it, but you know that it's bad. Okay, <laughs> and he picks this dog right up. And this dog fights him. <laughs> like this dog, it does not give up. It, it's like being held in the claws of a monster. And it's like, come on, you fucker. <laughs> like he is clearly going to lose the fight. Yeah. Yeah. But he's a good boy. <laughs> anyway, next morning, birds are chirping and Carol can't find their dog, Baron. Yeah, but he was so oh. tough. I'm like, Barone. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he, yeah. Barone. Right. Barone. <laughs> she goes to the doghouse. It's all spooky. She gets a cat scare. Okay. You know, the kind. Cat jumps out. Oh, yeah. And Carol, played by Cindy Weintraub. Okay. Carol's like, something weird about me, right? Like my teeth are going to eat my own face? <laughs> <laughs> something. You'll see when you see me. <laughs> Doug! I can't find Barone! And it cuts to Doug seeing like, oh, yep, I found some slime on the garbage can. He just whips his fingers right through it. She's like, ew, what do you think it is? He's like, I don't know, but I like it. <laughs> and he's like flipping his fingers trying to get it off, and it won't come. <laughs> and the trail goes off that way, so they follow it. Barone! <laughs> hey, pup! Come on! It cuts to town, all right? And uh, a pickup truck pulls up. It's Vic's truck. He backs it up, and there is a bed full of 38 cases of beer. Whoa. <laughs> yep. They all start... Him and his goons. He's got a gang of goons, all right? Yeah. You know, because he's got money. They all start unloading the beer, and one of them's like... Hey, screw the festival with our wives and kids. What we need is a little private party with some of them hot numbers from Humboldt County. <laughs> and then another one is like, Jesus, man. What? Y you have a wife. What's wrong with you? I was just joking. The beer is for the upcoming festival. Okay. okay? The Salmon Festival. <laughs> you like Salmon? <laughs> I can't believe people call it salmon. <laughs> uh, some people do. It's weird, right? Salmon. <laughs> it's a thing, salmon. <laughs> Doug and Carol follow the trail out to the shore, and they find the greatest dead dog you have ever seen in a movie. Damn. Oh, man, it looks great. It's like <laughs> this bloody pile of hair and crap. Like... In, in, like, mixed up with seaweed. Its mouth is wide open. It's got a big white eyeball. Oh. Man, this is a great flick. <laughs> they don't make these anymore. Kids. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they freak out. <laughs> Maroon! <laughs> Meanwhile, Vic and the boys, they're taking the beer to their boat, and whoa! More dead dogs, man! All oh. over the dock! Oh, jeez. Nothing as good looking as Barone, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then they hear this one. They're all like, Look at these dog bodies. And then they hear one dog like, rawr, rawr. <laughs> they turn around and Vic's like, eh, that's funny. The only dog left alive is Johnny Eagles. Uh-oh. <laughs> the Indians. And then we linger for a while on Vic staring at these dog corpses. And he goes, boys, we got ourselves a problem. And then it cuts to later that night, okay? And we got a POV shot of somebody peeping in a house. And some sultry music is playing. And they're peeping in the window at pretty Peggy Larson in her red nightie. <laughs> She's in the bathroom brushing her hair. She hears something, so she walks over and opens the door to the outside. That's in her bathroom. Oh, that is weird. Oh. And she's like, ah, nothing out there. And then she doesn't even shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's like something Nurse Candy would do. <laughs> you know? You got that right. Yeah. So she gets on a robe. She goes to check the rest of the house. I hope it's not the big bad wolf. <laughs> Go ahead. Fuck me to death. <laughs> Let's see what you got. <laughs> so she's creeping around the house and she scares herself. She scares herself by bumping into her sink full of 
dirty old dishes. <laughs> so now let there be no doubt this is Nurse Candy. <laughs> you shut up. <laughs> anyway, the phone rings. Phone rings. Say so, hello. Oh, hi, Linda. Yeah, I just got startled. Yeah, I'm ready. When you coming over? And she's like, in a sexy nighty. And you're like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, see ya. So she's still scared, so she picks up a meat fork. All right? <laughs> the kind with two spikes. Okay. Yep. She goes to the front door and sees a shadow pass by it. And the doorknob is like, clickety-click, come on. Ooh. <laughs> Someone wants to come in. <laughs> and she's like, eh. Uh. And then, whoa! Her boyfriend, Jerry, scares her from behind. Nice. She's like, you asshole. Oh, come on, baby. He starts kissing on her. <laughs> and she is not in the mood anymore. Besides, Tom and Linda are coming over. And it's like, what is going on here? It's like a swingers party. <laughs> she said she was ready, but she's in a nighty. Anyway, we cut to the jamboree happening in town. Everybody having a good time. Come on. <laughs> Welcome to the annual Salmon Festival. And yeah, it's like country music, country music. Doug and Carol arrive to take their minds off Barone. And the mayor, he greets him. He's like, hey, Doug, when are we going to get you duck hunting, young fella? And Doug's like, oh, I, I just lost my dog. It's <laughs> 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 weird, right? <laughs> the mayor gives this look like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then Vic shows up with the boys. And his wife, she's there. And she's like, have you been drinking? And he's like, of course I've been drinking. Come on, woman. <laughs> <laughs> Vic Morrow. <laughs> All right, don't touch him. <laughs> don't touch him. <laughs> Inside, it is a banjo party. Okay. Uh-huh. And the mayor, he's like, hey, everybody, I want to introduce you to the Canco Incorporated president. This is Canco. They're going to open a cannery, maybe. Right. Soon. Yeah. And everybody's like, yeah! And his man, James Edwards, who waves and looks right into the camera. <laughs> and their associate, Dr. Susan Tlewicker. And everybody, yay, yay! And the president of Canco gets up. He's like, our country will be the best thing to happen here since God made the river and the ocean. Because if there's one thing everyone loves, it's canned salmon. <laughs> We can't lose, right? Ew. Can't salmon, yeah? <laughs> anyway, massive applause. And Vic is going crazy clapping next to his hilariously unhappy wife. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring jobs here. And you may not believe it, but we're actually going to increase the catch. Dr. Tlewicker has been researching at our labs upstream and says now they've got a way to make the salmon grow bigger faster, and twice as plentiful. And everybody's like, yeah! <laughs> Woo! Banjo. <laughs> Everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> so, Dr. Tlewicker, she's like getting food later at the buffet, and Carol is serving, and she's like, hi, welcome. Yeah, I hear my husband's taking you out uh, fishing tomorrow. You know, that'd be nice. And Doug's there. He's like, yeah, I got a rod and reel for you. Dr. Tlewicker's like, oh, how how sweet, yes. <laughs> and Vic shows up. <laughs> he just shows up. Hey, Doug, what do you think about this gal? She's going to do great things, huh? And I don't believe it when I see it. And Dr. Tlewicker goes, oh, you'll see it. <laughs> and Carol goes, what? <laughs> and then it cuts to Peggy and Jerry. And they're at the Jamboree, but they left to go get it on in the back of his pickup truck. Right? All right. Yep, that's what happens. So uh, <laughs> she hears a noise. Jerry, what was that? He's like, I didn't hear anything. Keep going. <laughs> and he pulls out her boob. Just one. She's only got one. Yes, baby. <laughs> but he likes that. Inside, everybody's dancing, and it's weird. Um, James <laughs> James Edwards, uh, the, the president's man, James Edwards. He's dancing with Dr. Tlewicker, but he's like three feet tall. <laughs> and he's all like excited and she is bored to death. <sighs> and somebody's like, yeah, every guard dog at that dock was dead except for Johnny Eagles. Isn't that weird? And then the music stops. Everybody turns around and in walks Johnny Eagle. 
standing in the doorway with his dead dog in his arms. Oh, no. Man, this movie has got some dead-ass dogs. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Somebody killed my dog. Hey, Vic, got any ideas? And Vic's like, oh, God. What a coincidence. Somebody killed seven of our dogs at the dock last night. You got any ideas? I don't kill dogs to get what I want. I'm putting an end to this. He lays his dog down on the dance floor. I'm going to court. I'm filing suit for the return of all Indian lands along the river. I'm stopping your cannery, Vic. By the law. Your law! Hey, uh, this guy wasn't even invited to this party. Uh, <laughs> he's upsetting the folks. Get him out of here, Moore. And then the guy behind him just grabs him and drags him out, kicking. <laughs> Come on, let's have some music. Keep the party going. All right, I'll be back. I got to go outside and take care of, you know, <laughs> business. <laughs> And everybody just like, let's Vic go. Yeah, he's going to go outside and get into a fight. Sheriff's at the party. <laughs> didn't, didn't do anything about it. So Vic goes outside. And Moore is still holding Johnny Eagle. Moro, you cheap bastard. I'm sick of your messenger boys. Why don't you fight like the man you pretend to be? And Vic Moro's like, I told you already. Get your drunk ass out of here before I kick it out. <laughs> Like, Vic is clearly the drunk one. Yeah. You think you can, you white ass? Come on, let's go. And then Vic's like, you don't think I can do it? <laughs> and then the guy holding Johnny Eagle goes, oh, I know you can do it. <laughs> I know you know I can do it. Everybody else knows I can do it. But how do you teach a dumb Indian? Ah, just let him go. And then he just punches Johnny Eagle in the face. Oh. The hell's that, right? Yeah. Bastard. And then the three of them start fighting. And to be honest, Vic does, uh, he does kind of dominate Johnny Eagle a little bit. <laughs> and then the whole crowd comes out to watch, but they see Vic just punching Johnny Eagle while he's being held by two goons. Oh. So, uh, Doug turns to Carol and he's like, uh, get back, will you, my love? And then he punches one of the goons. He like gets involved. Oh, good. Yeah. And then Vic comes for Doug. <laughs> And Doug whips, like, three guys' asses at the same time. But he does it, like, old man style. Like, put him up. Come on. Bam! <laughs> Respect the cock. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Doug McClure. Somebody gets slammed into Jerry's pickup truck, right? Peggy puts her boob away. <laughs> and Jerry, like, opens the window to see what's going on and gets Punched in the face <laughs> on accident, but he like gets knocked out. <laughs> anyway, back in the fight, Doug's pretty much taking care of Vic, but there's a goon like grabbing onto him from behind, and Doug just goes, "Get him off my back, bro!" And then Tommy like grabs that guy and punches him. <laughs> Tommy was just watching the fight, and Doug just tagged him in. <laughs> it was great. Vic's like over here sitting this one out now and uh, Johnny Eagle goes and grabs him to punch him and then like dirty hairy gunshots yeah. happen and it's the sheriff. Oh, okay, boys. <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> I go on home. Party over. <laughs> and then across town, one of his bullets finally comes down and kills another dog. <laughs> <laughs> The next day, we're on the river, and it's Vic, and he's in his motorboat. He's got a pea coat and a watch cap, so he's, like, doing covert things. Oh. He's searching. He's got a rifle in the boat, and we, uh, he's doing this to up-to-no-good music. How about that? <laughs> Sounds up-to-no-good, right? <laughs> Anyway, he finds another boat, and he pulls ashore. <laughs> and it turns out what Vic is up to is he's going to spy on Johnny Eagle. He do he brought a rifle, though, so maybe he was going to just murder him. Oh, God. <laughs> but it turns out Johnny Eagle's having a meeting at his house, uh, a tribe meeting. And he just hears them talking about suing, you know, the county. My lawyer says it's a landmark case. He's taking it on for free. So let's vote on it and get it going. And Vic's like, shit. <laughs> Elsewhere, Linda is at the beach. From Tom and Linda? From the swingers party? Yeah. She's there with Peggy and Jerry. And those two, they're laying out on the beach, and they are rubbing and a-loving. <laughs> and this is like dirty, gross beach. 
because it's like in Maine. Okay? <laughs> Underwater, we see a monster hand like swiping at the kelp, so we know it's lurking. Yeah. <laughs> Out on the water, Doug and Tommy are taking James Edwards and Dr. Tulibaker fishing uh, with the president. Okay, she's like snapping photos. She takes pictures. Peggy and Jerry run off because it turns out Linda is perving on them and sketching them. <laughs> oh. Like in sex positions. Yeah. So they leave, and as they do, they pass a big old gnarly footprint. <laughs> okay, with like big pointy toes. Ooh. <laughs> and bunions. <laughs> James Edwards. Little James. Okay, the president's main man. He catches a fish. He's like, it's mine. It's mine. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, a, it's a big ass fish, James. Pretty good. Dr. Tulliwicker's like, y- yay, it only, it only took you two hours. Doug says, yeah, but you're going to change that, aren't you? I'm going to try. And then they just stare at each other like, shiksh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wants it. Both? We don't know. <laughs> Peggy and Jerry, they're alone now. And she's like, does your face hurt? Because I mean, he got punched. He's like, yeah, but you can make it better. He's <laughs> like, you got a one-track mind, Jerry Potter. <laughs> Jerry Potter! <laughs> Jerry Potter and his whomping willow. <laughs> so they're climbing like slimy rock jetties. You know, the kind that like ruin your day out. You, know? <laughs> you finally get off the couch to go hang out by the river. You slip on a slimy rock. It turns out you broke your tailbone. It's a real romantic place to be. Better watch out. There's also a cave nearby. <laughs> On the boat, the president, he like, he's like talking to James about catching the fish. He's like, but what did you use for bait? And James is like, hey, 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 spit on it. <laughs> and the president's like, <laughs> you spit on it. <laughs> I like that. I like that, James. And then the president, he catches a fish on his line. He's like, whoa, it's so heavy. Yeah, easy. Bring it in easy. I can't. It's a monster. (laughs) And you can see underwater, like, there's a huge dark shape. Like, he's probably just caught a humanoid from the deep. (laughs) And then the the line breaks. And Dr. uh, Dr. T, to Lewicker, okay, she's taking photos. And Doug's like, hey, Tommy, did you see what it was? No, but uh, something cut that line, Doug. Dr. T's like, what? You've been on the water too long, Tom. Too long, Tom! That's <laughs> what they call him! <laughs> it's like, How did you know, Dr. Tulliwicker? <laughs> what was in those water photos anyway? I won't know until I develop the film. It is 1980. Okay? <laughs> Peggy and Jerry still wandering now wading privately in a little slimy bay. And Jerry's screwing around. You know, he likes to scare her. So he like goes underwater and she's like, Jerry, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry Potter. <laughs> and then he, Rawr! he comes up, he scares her. He's like, <laughs> it's so funny. Then they kiss and he puts his hand in the butt of her pants. And then he just like goes down and gets dragged away. Oh, yeah, it is actually pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> and she's like, huh? <laughs> Underwater, Jerry is fighting for his life with a giant reptilian fish man monster. Oh, uh, that shit. is right, okay? And the blood just clouds around. Here we go now. Stuff's happening. Peggy's like, Jerry, Jerry, come on, Jerry. She turns around and sees him, okay? And he's like standing up out of the water with his back to her. And she goes over and turns him around, and half of his face is ripped out. Oh, God. Ah! And then he like... He falls. He's dying. Yep, yep. Not going to be okay from this one. (laughs) She runs, and then she gets dragged away. Okay? No! So, as she's getting dragged away, for the final time, we see Jerry Potter and the half-blood rinse reach for her before the waves take him into the boggy deep. (laughs) Meanwhile, on the beach... sex was mind-blowing, but I loved him. Yep. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the beach, Peggy is in trouble. Okay, <laughs> she's getting she's getting dragged off. She's clawing at the sand. All right, and that's when we cut to Linda. And Carol calls down to her. I'm going to see the boats. 
Uh, you want to come? Belinda turns around. She's like, I don't know. Where's Peggy and Cherry? And then we see Peggy get thrown down by a big, green, nasty fish man. <laughs> Fuck. Whoa. Yeah. Woof. Like, like shape of water? Like the shape of water guy, like let himself go. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, stopped. He stopped. Shape of water man, stop taking a bath. How about that? <laughs> he's like covered in slimy crap, okay? But he's like also big. And he's got, these monsters have like seriously long arms. Like the hands, they're down there by the knees. Hand so low. <laughs> Hand so low, you can't see what they're doing. <laughs> anyway, the very first thing he does is rip off her top. That's Woo. right. Fuck yeah. And she's like, no! Oh. And then he like, he's like, yeah, let's get them boobs all slimy with scum and algae. We cut to the town bar with Vic and the boys. And they're nursing their wounds. Remember, they all just got their asses beat. Oh, yeah. By uh, Doug McClure and Johnny Eagle. Uh, so Vic is like telling his goons all about the meeting that he overheard. Johnny Eagle means business. He's filing a lawsuit. He's got a big shot city attorney. You know, one of those minority lawyers. And then Moore, his like number one sly redneck. Mm -hmm. He's like, we got to get ourselves a lawyer, Vic. And then what? Wait two years till a court date? You think the cannery folks will wait? No way. We got to take care of Johnny Eagle and his people. Or no cannery. And Moore's like, mmm, canned salmon. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so what do we do? Anything we can. So Doug and Tommy, they dock up. And then Johnny Eagle shows up. He, how's your feet? <laughs> Doug's like, it's okay. You look worse than I do. I want to say thanks again to both of you. Yeah, any man had done the same thing. Like Doug McClure, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doug, I want to talk to you about the cannery. And then Doug's like, Johnny, I want it. You don't. There's nothing more to say, man. He just leaves. Oh. So, he's he's just a man, folks. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't particularly need friends. <laughs> but he will help you out if you're getting your ass beat. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Tommy, his younger brother's like, hey, too long, Tom. Too long, Tommy. <laughs> hey, he's just looking out for the town, man. And then Linda shows up. So they all make dinner plans. Guess what's for dinner? It's fish. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of my favorite parts happens. Out on the beach, there's just a tent. And you don't see uh, who's in it yet. You just hear, hey, honey, come on, show us some skin. Come on, take it off. <laughs> Nothing comes off till I see it. <laughs> okay, how's this? And now we're in the tent. We see the, uh, the this woman, and she's like, come on, show me more than the head. <laughs> oh, God. And then we see what's actually happening. Well, the head's the best part, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and there is this ventriloquist dummy <laughs> <laughs> who's, like, poking out of a bag. <laughs> the dummy's name is Chuck. <laughs> She's like, oh, come on. And then she just starts stripping. She takes off her shirt, pulls out her boobs. And Chuck, he's talking to his human counterpart. He's like, Billy, she's doing it. Oh, my <laughs> God. Get me out of this thing. Come on. What are you, klutz? <laughs> Billy takes Chuck out of the bag, and she's just getting naked. And she, she's loving this. She's having a great time. She's all smiles. He's like, hey, honey, want to see my woodpecker? And, and she goes, <laughs> Will I get splinters? <laughs> oh, don't worry, baby. I've been sanded. <laughs> and Billy, okay, straight face the whole time. He like he looks like he's like reading a magazine while they're talking. <laughs> hey, baby, I bet you never made it with two dummies. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just smiling. Well, Chuck, works every time. Yeah, what would you do without me? Well, just watch. So... He puts Chuck away. <laughs> and he starts to pull out his woodpecker. And then a monster rips into the tent. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Okay. He rips in and takes a huge swipe out of Billy's back. Oh. Yeah. Blood. Yeah. It doesn't seem like the kind of thing that would kill you. But uh, now there is a monster ripped into the tent. So now everybody, everybody is stuck in a tent. 
Okay. Uh. So he's got like claws and stuff. Oh, yeah. Big uh. sharp claws, big sharp teeth. We'll talk more about what he looks like later, what they look like. Becky screams, she is panicking, and she actually gets out of the tent, okay? You know, it is just a tent, right? (laughs) She gets out of there and just starts running naked, bouncing down the beach. And the monster, he's like ripping and tearing his way out of the tent, and he is having a hard time. (laughs) Because it is not easy. Billy probably didn't die from the swipe in his back, but he was probably trampled to death while that was going on, right? So anyway, but she is running. And now, her her name's Becky. Becky has gotten away. Oh. And she's, yeah. Hey, all right, Becky. Victory, baby. She's got bush. (laughs) Hardcore going on. And she's like, yeah. And then she turns and runs right into another one. Oh, God. (laughs) Who's just like standing there and catches her. (laughs) And then he throws her down. Okay. And she's crawling, crawling away. And then he jumps on her and uh, he goes to Tuna Town. (laughs) Come along with the snorts. You have to leave. Uh, Well, uh, what do you got going on, (laughs) Casey? Becky is played by Lisa Glazer, uh, whose IMDb photo is her getting raped by a fish man. Oh, oh God. God. Shit. That's right. Anyway, now it's kind of twilight. It's dusk. So Vic and two goons, they're heading down the river in a motorboat. Johnny Eagle still has Linda and Tommy with him, and they're going to his house to eat some fish, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and they hear another motorboat, you know, on somewhere, and they're like, what's going on? Johnny Eagle's a little suspicious. He's like, I don't get visitors out here. Anyway, he goes in to get some fish, and Tommy and Linda, they're kissing outside, and we see a humanoid head poke up out of the river. And on their heads, okay, you can see their brains. And they're like giant ass brains. (laughs) Like split down the middle, but big like butt cheeks. (laughs) (laughs) But it's dark, okay? And Vic's boat is getting closer to Johnny's house. And then one of them pulls out a Molotov cocktail. Yeah. All right. And one oh. of the goons is like, oh, shit, man, I don't like this. And then Moore is like, shut up, Susan. <laughs> he just like, calls this man Susan. <laughs> like, we agreed. Vic says, no, 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 let's drift in a little closer. Okay, so Johnny Eagle is out there grilling fish, Tommy and Linda. Vic lights a cigarette and then the Molotov. <laughs> and Moore throws it. Johnny Eagle actually sees it coming. And he's like, Tommy, get down. He, like, pushes Linda, and then boom! His whole, like, back patio and uh, storage shed just, like, blow up. Oh, shit. Okay, this is, we're only talking about a Molotov cocktail, okay? <laughs> it must have been his meth lab or something. <laughs> I mean, the damage is catastrophic. Yeah. And, it like, now his house is burning, okay? And J- oh. Johnny Eagle's like, let's go, the whole forest will burn. So they start fighting the fire, all right? They run to the river, and the boys try to start up a bilge pump so they can pump water on the fire. And the humanoid head is its inching closer in the dark with its butt brain. <laughs> and Linda starts filling a bucket with water and, like, running back to the fire and tossed it on there. And Tommy is like, Linda, that's like spitting on it. <laughs> Here, take my truck and go to town. Get some help. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass Linda, right? <laughs> So she drives off. Uh, John Eagle, they, they get the pump working. He's spraying water on the fire. Man, she's kind of dumb. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Tommy's at the pump and he hears off in the river out in the dark. And he just picks up his rifle and goes, you coward. And he runs to the water. Keep running, you bastards. Click, click. Pow. And then a humanoid hand reaches up and grabs his leg. And he like. He sees it happening, too. And he's like, whoa! <laughs> and I bet that was terrifying. Yeah. Okay? He gets pulled in. Uh, he, he tries to get out, but it rears up and pulls him in again. Okay? He's, like, clawing his way, trying to get back on the dock. And he grabs the rifle and just starts beating this thing's head, right? And it's bleeding. Like, he might be uh, he might be ha- finding some success soon. Oh. So he's starting to climb out, and Johnny Eagle turns and finally sees what's happening, and sees this giant butt brain monster all over Tommy. And then the humanoid grabs Tommy's head and just beats it against the dock like eight times. Oh, jeez. Oh, Johnny Eagle just picks up an axe and throws it 
like <laughs> right at the area where his best friend is getting rocked and rolled. Okay? Oh. But he hits that thing right in the head. Oh. <laughs> Johnny Eagle, ladies and gentlemen, yes. And it falls in, okay? And then Johnny grows, uh, he grabs Tommy. And then it comes out again and grabs him. Or it was another one. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Johnny grabs uh, Tommy's rifle and shoots that thing three times and kills it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, All right. right. Johnny Eagle, played by the way by Anthony Pena. Okay, and he's been in uh, he's been in some famous stuff. He's a Marathon Man. Okay, he was also in The Running Man, which is weird. It's like uh, two movie titles it's about the same thing. <laughs> but in The Running Man, he was. Uh, <laughs> At the beginning of the jailbreak, where we see the head explosion thing, yeah. like the deadlock scenario, he's the guy, he was Chico's buddy. No. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger yelled out, Chico, no! <laughs> he John, was that kid. Johnny his Eagle buddy. was okay. Yeah. So maybe Tommy's dead, I don't know, but Johnny's like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Linda is driving to town. When a monster hand smashes the windshield from on top of the truck. She's like, oh my god. Oh. She's like trying to swat it away with her hand. Like, make it go. <laughs> and then she pulls the old brake, throw, and roll trick. Oh, right? yeah. It starts getting up. So she runs it over. And it's like, all right. And then she gets attacked through the back window by the other one. She never even knew it was there. <laughs> Then she takes Johnny Eagle's truck right over a bridge and blows that shit up. That's right. <laughs> oh. Yep. So ends the Ballad of Linda. Oh. The next day in town, Dr. Tulliwicker goes to the general store, okay, and she's like, I'd like to rent a boat. And you're like, what? Like, why? She Maybe she, you know, she always taking pictures and stuff. She's a scientist. Yeah. She's looking for uh, evidence, maybe. Mm-hmm. The old man's like, yeah, okay, uh, no problem. I just need to see some ID. And she hands it to him, and he's like, hmm, Dr. Susan Tallywacker. <laughs> She's like, Tallywacker. <laughs> he's like, Dr. Tallywacker, I wouldn't advise voting today. <laughs> you see over there, a big commotion happening. So she goes across the street to check it out. It's Vic and the boys. Yeah, Jerry and Peggy are missing, and Linda's dead. Vic's like... What the hell was Linda doing in Johnny Eagle's truck? <laughs> and then a motorboat comes up, and here's Johnny Eagle. He rides up, and he has de- near dead, too long Tommy in the boat. And the sheriff's like, "Oh, is that that's too long Tommy? <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, you got some explaining to do, Johnny Eagle." So they grab uh, Tommy and they rush him to the hospital. Doug and Carol show up. Carol goes with them. Dr. Tulliwicker is talking to Johnny Eagle. <laughs> She's like, how tall were they? Uh, they were like seven feet tall. And how many did you see? Four or five. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> maybe there was maybe like more attacked later, though. You know? Yeah. That's scary to think about. Doug looks at the sheriff. He's like, what happened to Tommy? Mm, I don't know. Now they're saying it's sea monsters. Some kind of sea monster <laughs> thing. You sucked his dick. <laughs> That's a good one. Vic's like, That's right! Sea monsters! Yeah, they burned his house! They, they attacked, they even took the dead away! Right? Right, Johnny Eagle? Oh. Johnny Eagle just looks at him like, You a hole. Doug is going out. Who is with me? Vic's like, To do what? To find evidence! Something sank Deke's boat, killed our dogs, now it's attacking humans, and whatever it is, it ain't Johnny! I need a mate, Vic. How about it? Ah, it's a waste of time. You afraid? And Vic's like, free to wood. Anyway, no one will go with him except for Johnny Eagle. But the sheriff's like, oh, you, you may be murdered, Tommy. <laughs> You're going to have to trust him to me. He knows what I'm looking for. And Dr. Tulliwicker's like, I'm going with you. Doug's like, no. <laughs> I'm a scientist. So she goes. They go back to Johnny Eagle's dock. And they're taking pictures, investigating, and Dr. Tulliwicker's like, they were here all right. Are there any around now? (laughs) They sound like nocturnal predators. They keep to themselves during the day unless their territory is threatened. Is this their home territory, Doctor? I don't know. But if you're right about their size, the upstream food supply won't sustain them, and they'll, they'll need to go to the ocean. You sound pretty sure of yourself. I have to be with men like you around. And he's like, what? 
I don't know what you mean, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So now they're out on his fishing boat. And Dr. Tlewicker is just sketching, <laughs> sketching, sketching. And she's like, like this? No, that's pretty close, but the head's much bigger. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. Like this? That's it. <laughs> so what did the sea monster look like? <laughs> uh, it was green. With big brains and uh, like a lot of sharp claws and stuff. <laughs> they may be intelligent. They could have developed more than I figured. And all of a sudden, there's a fish on the line. Something's, you know, something's on the line, right? Johnny starts reeling it in, and Doug comes over with his club, with his hook club, okay? And then, ah, oh, damn it, it's a salmon. It's all we wanted this whole time. I never thought I'd be upset that finding a fish. The doctor's like, well, if we find salmon this big here, we can't be far from finding what we're after. And now... Underwater, something is lurking in the kelp. Oof. So now they're driving, a little little time's gone by, and the doctor's just like uh, staring out there with binoculars, and Doug comes walking up. He's got his thermos coffee cup, okay? Uh-huh. And he's like kind of maybe swaying a little. <laughs> he's drinking coffee. There's a little bourbon in it probably. You know, he's like, hey, uh, I just talked to my wife on the radio. And she thinks I'm fishing all night, so, uh, you know. Oh, and my brother's okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, have they spoken to him yet? Oh, no. He's, you know, he's not awake. But uh, his his vitals are strong. Okay? She's like, uh-huh. How much do you know you're not telling, Tallywhacker? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Talibaker. <laughs> Look, Doug, the coastline. What? There's caves. Where do they lead to? Uh, and it just cuts to them all getting in a raft. <laughs> So they explore the crappy, slimy rocks, all right? And uh, Doug's got a rifle. Johnny's got a harpoon gun. And then Dr. T just yells out, There's your evidence! Rawr! There's a monster, like, on the beach coming at him. <laughs> oh, but he's, like, real slow. Like, too slow. Okay? <laughs> now I'm coming to get you. And then, they, like, there's more monsters. Like, one of them is, like, laying in the seaweed. Rawr! And they have huge teeth. Okay, and like big, you know, brains. Yeah. So green. <laughs> we have fish sticks. Yeah. Big ones. <laughs> like spiny. <laughs> but the spikes, they face forward. You know? Ooh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> like they're designed for keeping something away. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. So she's like, don't shoot. And she starts taking pictures. And it's coming at him. And then she's like, now, okay, now you can shoot. <laughs> and boom, 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 boom. It dies, all right? But then there's another coming for Tolubaker. And <laughs> Doug takes care of this with, like, extreme prejudice, all right? And there's, like, more of them. And he just, he is just shooting. It's time I can finally just kill things. <laughs> <laughs> While he's doing that. Johnny Eagle get, actually gets dragged into the water by one of them that is going to have his way with him. <laughs> but uh, Doug shoots it. So Johnny staggers out, and he's like, that's twice I owe you my life. Yeah, damn right, man. <laughs> so the doctor's taking pictures of all these corpses, and then she finds a whole lady leg in the seaweed. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. So she's taking photos, and they're like, oh, my God, who is it? They dig around, and it's Peggy. Oh. But she's still alive. Oh. Yeah, she's like kind of catatonic. Her eyes are open, but she's like, not moving. Totally covered in slime. And Doug's like, let's get her out of there. And he just uncovers her boobs. (laughs) Johnny's like, we should take some more photos for investigation. (laughs) Another humanoid rears up out of the muck and Johnny harpoons it. And then Doug like starts poking it. And then we fade to Dr. Tewilliker's lab at the at the fishery. Her tabernacle of weird stuff in jars. And then, boom, they just slap this humanoid body on the table. And they're going to study it. And there's like, all of this jizz coming out of its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are these things? I think they just evolved quickly and appeared. Note the gills on the side of the head. And penis. <laughs> yeah, like a fish. <laughs> Fish have gills on penises. <laughs> They're pretty good on the land, though. 
Yes, but clearly the water is their natural habitat, although I think they were becoming amphibious. So then we see Doug and Johnny again, but standing in between them this time is little James Edwards, who's just like, hey, you guys, I just showed up. Wow, look at that. <laughs> look at its big cranium. A tremendous brain capacity, but that doesn't mean it can, you know, it can use it all. Yeah, it's, it's how you use it that counts. <laughs> James is like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it has webbed hands. And why don't you guys leave, and uh, we'll let you know what we find here at Canco. You know, no, 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 no. I want to see its woodpecker. Come on. <laughs> Come on, I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> the Canco president wants this kept quiet. You know, your theory could be wrong, doctor. I've been trying to tell you guys about this for years. Now look, it's right in front of you, you stupid ass. James, look. And he's like, hey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> These people have a right to know. <sighs> All right, let's see. It's Woodpecker. <laughs> Get the DNA film. DNA 5. Now. Okay, okay. So we cut to a black and white film strip that they're watching of a big butt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Johnny Eagle's just like. <laughs> 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 but then we see this. It's not a butt. It's cells dividing. Yeah, we're watching a science film. <laughs> It's like, this is DNA 5. It's a growth chain. And this film is our, our experiments with frogs. Normally, it would take frogs 12 weeks to mature. But with DNA 5, it was only a matter of days. So what's the point? Well, we were doing this with salmon, too. Okay, but when big tidal surges tore apart the test farm, uh, like 3,000 DNA-treated salmon escaped into the ocean. Oof. And I wanted to tell, but Canco stopped me. And it's my theory that the treated salmon were fed upon by, uh, and, and they brought out evolution in more primitive fish, like the coelacanth, okay, which was recently discovered here. What's a coelacanth? <sighs> it's a prehistoric fish, okay? Anyway, here's my picks from today. This thing has like four growth cycles. It's like a fish in the beginning, but it's humanoid at the end. So why are they attacking us? Predators protect their territory and their food. Maybe they're smart enough to see man as a competitor. Yeah, but why the girls? <laughs> and then uh, if this movie had a famous line, like this would be it. She's like, it's my theory that these creatures are driven to mate with man now. And they're all like, man! <laughs> Let's just hope the people in town believe us. And then Doug's like, tallywhacker! <laughs> The festival! <laughs> She's like, oh my god. And then it cuts tonight at the festival. <laughs> There's a marching band. And it's going on, baby. It's the fairgrounds. We got carousels, food, games. Everybody is having fun. And this whole thing is right on the docks. Oh, oh shit. There's this radio DJ, like Madman Mike, with K-Fish, the big fish. <laughs> You know, he's broadcasting from the festival, and uh, he's he's got, like, bikini babes around him. He's the one in this movie that calls it Salmon. That's right. Like, <laughs> We're here at the big Salmon Festival, and here I am with Sandy, Miss Salmon. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and here's our very own favorite billboard, Kitty. And Kitty skates up, and she bends over, and it says K-F-S-H across her butt. Oh. Like, that was a thing in, like, 1980. <laughs> writing on the butt right he's like yeah she's gonna be uh skating around the midway and if you catch her you get a free visor all right here we go we're playing some music and having some fun and it cuts to doug's house and carol is like at home with the baby Mm-hmm. <laughs> wish i was having fun <laughs> so she puts him in the uh what do you call him uh playpen mm -hmm. and goes to take a shower at the festival the humanoids start poking up out of the water out in the dark oh god the sheriff's there. He's like checking things out. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now he meets Vic and the boys. Yep. Oh, well, what'd you find? Vic's like, we didn't find anything. We didn't find shit. <laughs> what about Doug and Johnny, huh? We didn't find anything. Where, where are they? I don't know where they are, but, uh, you know, that Johnny Eagle, he's probably off mating with a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like, yeah, man, that's a good one. Let's all go drink some beers. <laughs> yeah, let's have a good time, okay? It's a festival. So you know, there's a big old hoe down. Yep. They're dancing. <laughs> and then Doug's boat pulls in, all right? And everybody comes over to see him. 
And Vic's like, <laughs> what's this, Johnny? One of your sea monsters? Hold on to your cookies, Vic. And then he <laughs> dumps this humanoid out onto the dock. Oh. And the whole crowd is just like, oh, my God, what is that? And you see Vic, and he's got his hand over his mouth, and there is beard just like spewing out. <laughs> he's losing it. Dr. Twilliker's like, we think we know where they come from, but not how many there are. Vic's like, hey, we found Peggy. She's alive. She's going to be all right. And then a humanoid busts up out of the dock, like right in between them all. Ah! Dr. T just tosses Johnny Eagle the rifle. She's like, don't panic anyone. And everybody's just like, (gasps) screaming and panicking. (laughs) And Johnny Eagle just starts shooting. All right. We see that Vic is actually now quite far away. Like he ran early. Okay. (laughs) And then there are more, like, all over the place. The festival is now infested. Oh. Madman Mike is like, yeah, here at Cavefish, uh, oh, wow, there seems to be some sort of disturbance. Oh, my God. And then the killing starts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> People are getting pulled into the water. There's blood spewing up. Total widespread panic. There is one of these humanoids just like wandering around, wondering which way to go. (laughs) There's so many women around. (laughs) And then guess what? He catches Kitty, baby. That's right. Oh, no. Uh, If you know what I mean. Okay. Because he throws her to the ground and then takes her right in the kissing booth. That's right. Oh, Oh, shit. One of them has cornered uh, Marla Hooch in the <laughs> ring toss. You remember her from uh, A League of Their Own. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Not a handsome woman. But uh, she's like going back and forth to the left and the right. And it's like, uh-uh. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is happening. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> One of them's down in the water. He's like shaking the pylons of the dock. Like trying to collapse it. Like, bring the food and the women to you. <laughs> Men are getting killed <laughs> all over the place. All right. Uh, the gangway actually collapses. And there's one woman that's like holding on to it, screaming. So now it's just like this steep ramp down into the water. And if you slide down that ramp, there are humanoids with giant teeth and boners. <laughs> like, pick your poison. You know? <laughs> and she's holding on and she's screaming. And then a keg of beer like falls and knocks her down. Oh, God. Yep, down she goes. And they oh, get her. shit. Doug grabs Dr. Talubaker and they get on his boat and he's like, there's 50 gallons of gas in my hole. Start pumping. <laughs> the K-fish guy and Miss Salmon, you know, they're like, oh my God, what is happening? And then right in front of them, a humanoid like tackles a dude and rips his throat out right in front there. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, there is something happening at the festival. People are dying. They're ripping people's limbs off. It's horrible. And then on the radio in Doug's house, you can hear all that going on. Oh, but Carol is in the shower. So then you see a sexy silhouette. That's right. Oh. Yep. And a humanoid comes to the window. To oh, see. God. Yeah. And he's like, oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Back at the panic, the carnage continues. Guys are getting ripped apart. Uh, Peggy, you know, her, her dad has been in the movie. He's like looking for his daughter, but, uh, you know, kind of forgot to mention him. Anyway, he gets his head ripped off. Yep. Oh. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> Dr. Talubaker is spraying gas into the water, just spraying it. Uh, and Doug's like, yeah, yeah, keep spraying. We'll kill all of these things. And there are just more and more of these monsters attacking the festival. There's throat biting. By now, there's like 50 or so in the festival, but you never see more than one or two at a time because they only had like two suits. <laughs> and there's this gag where uh, there's... A couple on the merry-go-round, and it goes around once, and you see them scared, and there's a humanoid coming at them. It goes around twice, and you see the humanoid coming for the guy, and it goes around a third time, and the guy is just dead, and the humanoid has moved on. (laughs) (laughs) Finally, one of them zeroes in on Madman Mike and Miss Salmon. Oh. Oh. She's in a bikini, so the humanoid wants her, all right? And uh, Madman Mike, like, defends her. First of all, he picks up a gun, shoots it once, and it gets knocked out of his hand. But then he, like, jumps in front of Miss Salmon. He's like, get behind me! Get behind me, Sandy! Carol is at home now listening to all of this on the radio. She's like, what? And she hears Madman Mike get clawed to death. 
All right. Right there. Damn. Oh. So she starts freaking out. Baby's in the playpen. There's a humanoid outside lurking. And uh, the kid spots it and starts crying. So Carol freaks out and goes and grabs a knife. She doesn't know what's out there, right? And she looks out the window and the humanoid's gone. So back at the festival, Miss Salmon is now fresh out of human shields. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the humanoid comes at her, right? And chases her back behind the tent. And with just the perfect swipe, he just makes her bikini top go away. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Like... He's got these giant long arms with these huge claws, and he just swipes it at her. And the bikini just disappears, and there is not a scratch on her. (laughs) And then she actually picks up a rock, starts hitting it in the head, and fights her way free. Damn. Yeah, so she she runs off camera, just bouncing as she goes. (laughs) She made it. Carol locks the doors, okay? She locks them after her shower, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> okay there is some kid at this festival who's holding a tiki torch and he looks he's a little boy and he just picks it up and throws it at a humanoid <laughs> <laughs> that humanoid goes up oh. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> okay <laughs> and the kid is looking at it like oh my god did you see what i just did <laughs> so the thing tumbles into the water doug is shooting she's shooting at him from the boat And everything is still going on, all this chaos. And me watching the movie, I'm like, I can't believe this doc is still so full of screaming people. You know, (laughs) they've been attacking for like 15 minutes now from the water side. (laughs) You know, you think like once you saw one, you'd go find your car and and leave. (laughs) Get out now. (laughs) So the kid who threw the torch, he goes up to Vic and he's like, please help me. My sister, she fell on the collapsed gangway. Oh, my God. And Vic, who we assumed was like, Running for his life. You know, earlier? Yeah. Running away? He's out there calling for his wife. Like, he's trying to find his wife. That's what he was doing. And he looks at the kid. He's like, what? Your sister? Come on, take me to her. Let's go. So they go and find this little girl hanging off the dock. He's like, he gets down. Give me your hand. Come on. Come on. Vic is trying to save this girl. Vic is a good guy. He's just a racist ass. (laughs) Give me your hand! And now there's a humanoid coming for the little girl. And it actually grabs her legs. And it's like, shit! And then, boom, boom, boom! His head, like, explodes. Everybody turns, Johnny Eagle. (laughs) Heck yeah! That's right. So, Vic can't quite reach the girl. And she won't reach up to grab his hand. And he's like, hold on! And he jumps down there to hang there with her so he can push her up. Oh, what a hero. Yeah, while he's doing that, another humanoid comes up, starts biting his leg. Yeah. He's like, ah, rah, rah, boom, boom. Johnny Eagle, baby. He kills that one, too. Heck, yeah. <laughs> and then Vic looks up, and he's like, oh, <laughs> it's you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> On the boat, Doug hands the flare gun to the doctor, and he's like, here, Dr. Tulliwicker, <laughs> send him to hell. And she takes the flare gun, and she's like, my name. <laughs> Is Tallywacker. <laughs> <laughs> she shoots the flare into the water and then whoa, the whole bay goes up in flames. Oh, God. <laughs> Johnny Eagle reaches down. Come on, Vic, give me your hand. Ah, uh, you know what? No, I'd rather get raped. <laughs> give me your hand. Finally, he does and he pulls him up. Everything is still in chaos, okay? There's monsters still all over the place. We see Vic's goon, Moore, okay, running with his wife, trying to escape, okay? And then all of a sudden, he gets knocked to the side, and he loses his wife to this uh, oh, <laughs> uh, no. this humanoid, like right there in front of him. Hold on just a minute. You got to watch, otherwise I ain't going to get off. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no, he's not going to stand for this. He picks up a, a pipe or something, and he, he actually beats it off. <laughs> and then they run okay uh in the water humanoids are burning <laughs> i remember watching this as like a little boy and i looked at dad and i was like how can water be burning <laughs> he's like it's a gas it floats on top god you're a dumbass <laughs> <laughs> anyway doug sends tallywhacker out to tie the boat up and she immediately gets attacked so he goes to run and help and then boom 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 Johnny Eagle, the lone warrior of this town, Hell yeah. 
It doesn't even die. <laughs> when he shoots it three times, it's just like, oh, I better crawl back into the water, man. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting out. I'm getting away from that guy. <laughs> okay. We are all losing to this man. <laughs> Doug's like, hey, my wife's at home. Johnny Eagle's like, go, Doug. Go to her. <laughs> So he pushes the boat back out. There's no gas in it, but, uh, you know, okay. <laughs> anyway, he drives home. As he's leaving, we see guys uh, in the festival. They're like, finally fighting back. And there's like 18 dudes beating up a humanoid. <laughs> like, Gang up on him. Surround him. I see his woodpecker. At home, the humanoid breaks in through the door, okay? And uh, Carol's like, oh, shit. She takes that baby and throws it in a closet, locks the door, and then turns around to fight. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So she's got this knife, and uh, she goes and turns all the lights in the house off. Like, uh, Carol might know what she's doing. Oh. <laughs> and it, it didn't find anything when it came in, so it goes it actually goes back outside and starts going around the house again, looking in the windows, and she's like following it through the house, but she's inside and it's outside. It was actually a pretty cool little scene. Hmm. And it finally busts its hand through the front door as she stabs it, stabs it, and stabs it some more. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh, good. And then across <laughs> the room, push, another one breaks in. Oh, shit. shit. So she has to go and fight that one. But that one's like right in her face, okay? The first one, it was just a hand through a door. So it, you know, kind of leaves. But she's got this one like, coming at her. It's like, yeah, baby, Carol. I like you, okay? <laughs> so she's she's backing away from it. She's throwing lamps at it. But it's coming, okay? And then finally, she gets into the kitchen, grabs a bottle of Drano, and squirts it in its face. Oh. And it's like, and it's working, okay? And then she just starts stabbing it in the chest over and over and over. And finally, it's like, okay, and it dies. <laughs> She huddles down. She's all covered in blood. She huddles down to wait because there's still one outside. All right. And then the front door, its doorknob starts, it starts uh, clicking. Come on now. Mm. What's going on? And then finally it opens up and she goes to stab it. And it's Doug. And no. he catches her hand. He's like, what the hell, Carol? <laughs> Where's the baby? It's okay. I locked him in the closet. <laughs> oh, thank God. And then uh, we fade to morning. And uh, back at the festival, the <laughs> aftermath. Okay, and I hope you like dead people because <laughs> we have got them. Oh, shit. Uh, everything's still burning, okay? The sheriff is like walking around all like in a fugue state. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you can't believe what's going on. They're like, Sheriff, Sheriff, where's Tallywhacker? Where's the doctor? <laughs> He's like, she, she went back to her lab. <laughs> She went back to her lab. She went back to her lab. And he just walks away muttering that over and over. Like, he's Aww. crazy now. Carol's like, Doug, let's just go home. I mean, everything's okay now, right? And that, as she says that, we just get this wide shot of the ruins of the Salmon Festival. Oh. And we cut to Dr. Tallywhacker in her lab. And she's in scrubs. Okay? And she's like, Peggy! Come on, Peggy, concentrate. <laughs> and Peggy's like, ah! she's in labor. Oh, okay. And oh, she is shit. crying. Yeah. And the doctor's like, you're almost there. Come on. You're doing great. Ah! Push. Come on, push. And we see her belly and it's like something's inside pushing around. <laughs> it's all gross looking. And then it's, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, all of this blood sprays all over Dr. Tallywagger. Oh, oh, shit. And then... <laughs> this baby humanoid just busts out of Peggy's stomach. Oh, uh, God. We see Peggy. She sees it. She's like... Wah! And then the little baby is like... Wah, wah! And the credits roll. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Yep, there you have it. It's such a great final scene. Good I job, know. Ron. Thank you. Yeah, Thank that was great. <laughs> <laughs> hey Chris, have you ever actually seen this movie? No. Oh, seems like tremors <coughs> with water, a little bit like being forced to get to know the dipshits in this town. Yeah, you know, and, mm -hmm. and their personal banding, conflicts banding together. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty good, though. Thanks. Yep, there you have it. Humanoids from the deep 
on movies with Ron. <laughs> I just I cannot believe how little we were when we were I know. watching this. Our parents were just like fuck it you yeah know? <laughs> monster sex it's fine <laughs> let, let him watch it it's fine <laughs> like one thing like upon re-watching this after so many years but we watched this so much as kids i know okay? really and Good lord but after all these years i was like man i do not remember all this racial uh you know yeah <laughs> uh, political d- d- dissent in this movie you yes. know this movie broke all kinds of ground mm-hmm. and not just words on butts <laughs> but also like genetic manipulation stuff like that yes so if they were genetic mutations what would their drive be to procreate with human women could they not procreate with themselves well they had evolved to the point where they had like you know penises big ones <laughs> yeah so you can't fit that in a fish <laughs> what if their penises were fish yeah. oh so they were all male okay yeah yeah. No, I'm dumb. You are dumb. <laughs> Maybe they were females, but they were probably bitches. How about that? Okay, I'm good with that. But uh, you hear people talk about this movie and they're like, you know those monsters? They're actually giant mutated salmon. But they're not. They mm-hmm. ate the salmon. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're dinosaur fish. That's what they are. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they are. <laughs> I really love the monsters in this movie. They they had a great look. Yeah. Well, on that note, folks, if you're using Apple Podcasts or iTunes, remember, ratings and reviews, we love them. We're on all your other favorite podcast apps and movieswithron.com. We got a Twitter, at Movies with Ron. There's a Facebook page. So check us out. It's been fun. Yep, we love you. See you guys. Movies with Ron.